My man. That was the weakest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you always try to be cool. Doesn't work when we're you try. Cool. Uh, so we're here again. Let's talk about it, man. So the documentary, The Hunt for the Skinwalker by Skinwalker. Jeremy fucking Portland. What is it? What is they? Corbell. No. What is it? Uh, George Knapp. He is a fucking. He sucks. He definitely sucks. No, serious. George Corbell. What What is the word that I'm looking for to describe him that describes him perfectly? Oh, McDouche. Port. Yes, but that's Portland his here? nickname. Oh my gosh! I'm gonna have to cut all this out. I, I'm sorry. I'm gonna. I don't know why I can't think of hipster. It. There Boom! Mm, in the fucking journals. <laughs> in, in the, the Jones. In the journals. <laughs> yeah, bro. I, so He's obviously, a that was the hardest thing for me was to watch Jeremy Smell Bell <laughs> fucking go off about. Because honestly, Nothing. all he did was middleman the shit. Mm-hmm. He went from he took the shit that was from George Knapp and all the shit that the Nids did and all the shit that they did, and he took it. And all he did was middleman it. He yeah. put him little snippets of him at his wall writing on chalkboards. I was there. Yeah. You, you, you did nothing. You did nothing. You were of worthlessness. <laughs> <You> <laughs> he know? fucking was worthless. I don't get it. But, okay, so then I guess my first question right off the bat then is how much do you actually think Jeremy Corbell did to help this? I mean, he, he helped put it out. So, I mean, yeah, he got connections in that kind of industry. Like, he made kind of the the... You got the roots together to build the foundation of something that we... The foundation? That we need of the foundation of nations. Yep. Foundation of nations. You're but not lying. he also didn't have the experience that Nap did. Like, he's like, oh, I found you. You're the winning You're the winning horse. I'm going <laughs> to bet on you. So he decided to take this winning horse and run with it, figuratively. And now he's... What? Everybody knows him now. Uh-huh. He's on Rogan's podcast because of this stuff. It's like... I, I appreciate that he's trying to do something for, like, the paranormal and UFO community, but it's also, like, they're doing it a different way, man. Like, everybody's got their own way of doing stuff, and everybody judges certain things or whatnot, but we literally watched a documentary not too long ago, and we counted the minutes that were wasted by his stupidness. And it was, I think, all together, the, the documentary is about two hours, and about an hour of that was just straight stupid bullshit because it's... You have to like, you have to sit there and create a screen where you're putting up the words that you're saying. Why do I need to see what the words you're saying? It's not impacting me. Uh-huh. It's not flooring my ass. Well, yeah. Like, holy shit, that word was just said? I didn't know that. Well, the funny thing was, is I can see from a cinematic standpoint to add Why? kind of punch to it. Yeah. But he was doing it in parts that really didn't matter. Like, when he did it for the wo- the woman's part where she said everybody has an experience for that. That was pretty cool. Because it took us from seeing her say it, and it took to the words where it's like boom, yeah, boom, he, boom. Yeah, but he say it on the side. On he's, that one he said on the side, right? I think those I'm ones sure. were like he had three lines on the on the bottom left part. So uh-huh. that was later in the doc that it was like, oh, he said these three things, but it was down here. Mm-hmm. When the beginning was like just the whole screen the whole thing, yeah, was he, taken up. I'm like, that's Dude. what I'm saying. There was parts where it was valid, where it looked like it really did help tell the story because it added like a punch to mm-hmm. it, you know. Um, a punch that you couldn't really get from anything else. Like, you could zoom in on her, but that would just look weird. You know, as a videographer, uh, I think it would have been more effective had he just kept doing little punches like that on words where, obviously, he wouldn't sacrifice, like, a really good facial expression where somebody's like, and they fucking, you know, and then to put it on, no. Oh but my God. parts like that where the lady was just sitting there and she's like, everybody has an experience like that. Yeah. Like, that's, that's cool. But, yeah, I think a lot of the time he was just middlemanning it, literally, so there was a part in the documentary, is the very beginning, uh, near the beginning, where George Knapp was talking and everything, and that's gravy. But then it goes to Jeremy Corbell talking about what he had just talked about and put it in his own words, but most of the time was just rephrasing I or just quoting exactly yeah. what he said. And it makes it, it makes it so you don't even want to like continue watching. It's so smooth jazz <laughs> it's it's so like fuck dude so, well it's it's ridiculous let it's, it uh, just let it go like if you just let the people that are telling the stories do their own thing and like yeah he can have his part in it but like he just it for me it pissed me off because he tried to insert himself into something which is exciting but he wasn't really involved in no and it's like dude you weren't there like get out of here like i understand it like you're excited about the project you want to keep doing it yeah and I'm going to repeat myself again later to see if you guys catch on. 
but you know, it's just like it's absolutely doesn't need to be there. I don't need I don't need to hear it again from George Knapp. Like he just said it. Thanks. Yeah. That's fucking stupid. But as, I mean, to answer your question, he he definitely helped promote it and get it out in, in streams and stuff because I'm sure Knapp isn't like in touch with the social media world. He doesn't even. It looks like he doesn't even give a shit. He has all this like these boxes of evidence. He's he like, looks yeah, defeated. he does look he looks defeated. defeated. Dude looks sad. Like, it's really sad. Like, I have all this stuff and all this evidence. He's like, now what? Because everybody wants to come out. It's either gonna get killed or scared. <sighs> And they're just nobody wants to whistleblow, and the ones that do, nobody cares. Let me give a shit. There's so much video evidence out of there, but it also gets mixed in with bullshit that you don't really know what you're looking for. And they, you know, if it's government conspiracy crap, they want to have disinformation out there in the public because it's gonna muddy up any kind of, you know, clarity that there is. So they want that shit. They want those weird whistleblowers to come out and be like, "Yeah, I saw a bigfoot. He's my cousin." Then they want to incorporate that with all the real shit that's really happening. But, you know, that's why it's so hard to see him come into this as a producer. You know, Corbell is like, oh, man. Like, it's like, it just feels like another one of those, like, crash, cash grabs. But you can tell that he's he's trying to not do it. But then I, I can't really get a beat on it. Well, it's, what he did was he was able to recycle what somebody else had did, mm-hmm. right? And, yeah, a lot of the stuff wasn't brought Nobody saw it before. That is for sure. He he was. We can give him credit for being the one to bring this to light again, uh, in in a more thorough and expansive Recharging look it. at you know because yeah. well because most of that footage, George Knapp didn't release you know so he yeah he had a big part in that and bringing it to the nowadays and and everything like that to but the on, but honestly it's like he he just. He really just put himself. He involved himself into. He made. He made it try to seem like he was more involved than he was. Mm-hmm. Honestly, you didn't. I really wish that mo- like the the talking that he does that really doesn't add to the story at the end where he he does this little part where he just kind of talks about what he thinks of stuff. That's cool. I get that. That's your right. But in 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 the video where he's just repeating what people say and he, mm-hmm. he it's just like making it longer. It's like B-roll conversation. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want that shit. We have he had George Knapp said he had over forty hours or maybe more. Yeah. I don't know of On those footage. Tapes, yeah, and he only he kept showing us like a cow that was Check mutilated. Check out these tapes I have. Yeah, and you get, see I saw the tapes no. more than I saw what was on the fucking yeah. tapes, and that's not. I'm not cool with that. They're like, oh, it says top secret on this tape. We'll we'll save that for later. Gosh, like you son of a bitch. Yeah, he's <laughs> trying to get a, a, a part two, three, four, and five. I'm telling you, it's it's weird. So that that I didn't really like. I felt like we could have got more information from the tapes or from him interviewing other people. And at the end, he had that that dude. I think his name was Robin Williams. Uh, he was a yeah. He was a music producer guy, um, or a music guy from the UK. And it was weird because I saw this guy get out of the truck. And he had a Gucci jacket on. And he had like a, a tat on his neck. And she was Motherfucker, like, the f- you did f- not see Yo. no UFOs. Get out of here. I was like, who the fuck Gucci? is this guy? You know, who the fuck? And it was just some guy. And it had perspectives from people I don't want to hear from. Mm-hmm. Like that music guy. I don't care. Like from Jeremy Corbell. Like, honestly, I don't care what your perspective is. Like at the end, sure, whatever. But during, like, no. Because you're not. Tell me. George Knapp was in it. You he's know what the I mean? Real, he can tell he's the realist because he's like, I don't care. Like he kind of is like, dude, oh, dude, we've already done this. Like you said, I'm repeating myself again. Like you said, he's defeated. <sighs> defeated. Super defeated. Yeah. Sunday nights. But he, I, I don't know, but if you see George Knapp, it feels like he, he is kind of happy it's going on now. But even in the, even when you watch him, because at the end, and I think, uh, I'm not sure if you saw this, but because we watched it today uh, before we did the podcast and we had watched it previously too. Um, so when you left to run the errand, there was a part where they were all sitting around this campfire in this half circle, and it was a bunch of dudes, the guys I mentioned, uh, George Knapp, and a few other people I don't really know. And they were getting perspective from Corbell, the music guy, and George Knapp just kind of was sitting there, like, you know. Like, it was, like, he, they were just spinning their wheels. Like, nothing was really, they were getting nothing out of it, you know? It was just to be there and to talk and for... I don't know, for content, I guess. And it really didn't add anything to it. So, But it, you could tell that George Knapp even was like, come on, guys. Yes, like, sir. just put the footage in there. Yeah, you just, know? just do it. Give me the footage. Jay Corbet, get out of here. Jay Corbet, fuck Fucking you. suck it. 
suck a mighty dick. No, I mean, I'm sure he had a lot more to do with it. And I'm, I'm the thing that I'm sure of for sure, for sure, is he put up a lot of money. Yeah, I feel. Oh bad. yeah, for I feel sure. like he put up a lot of money. He's always wearing nice watches and shit. Well, it feels like uh, I mean, he—that's what he had to have I'm been. Take that watch, bro. If you think about it, <laughs> it, that's what he had to have been. He had to have been the pocketbook in order to to fund all this stuff. Because I mean, nobody's gonna put up that kind of money for considerably old crazy people. Bigelow did. Yeah, I'm, yeah, did. dude. He spent all that money. Which, if I was rich too, I would. I'd be like, hey man, I want to get in the garden. Be like, what's it gonna take? For me to get some CIA information on some UFOs. Come on. Just tell me, bro. Give me with it. Just what it, what's it going to take? Yeah. Eight billion? Like, I'll get it. Come to Priz? I don't care. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I'll join Skull and Crossbones. Oh, Billy, oh, Billy, oh, Billy. Nights. Sunny nights. Smooth jazz, Crossbones. Skull and Crossbones. <laughs> no, they make you do weird shit. It was funny. I was watching something else, and it, there was talking, they were talking about the weird shit they made you do in there. My carrots up the um, butt or something? Something like that. Like, nom, just nom. compromising from it position so they could be like hey i got dirt on you too you know but, but anyway but we're still friends but we're, we're cool though right we cool and i hate you i might I kill you hold this over your head I might kill you over your head <laughs> i'm so glad the audio is going to work this time so the the the, the thing that was fucking up with the audio Screw that bad. was fl studios it only has a certain amount uh, like uh, only two gigabyte file size and with both of those files running at the same time in wave format no way so now we went to Audacity and we should be good. I just hope that the the audio quality turns out pretty good. I need to get these mic placements. The audacity of this program. The audacity of it all. But okay, so what do you think was the most interesting part about it all? Oh shit. I most. mean, seriously, out of all those tales, what was the most interesting one? Oh man. The most interesting one I think was the part where the portal opened up. <sighs> we were talking about how that creature came through it. That was interesting to me because that all links up, if you think about it, if they're talking about it's a, it's like the polar, or what's it called, the magnetic field of the Earth is weaker in some spots on the Earth. So, like, in some spots of the Earth, you can or jump stronger. higher. Yeah. So, like, it could be a weak spot there where maybe, the like, a portal is easier to make or be created. So, like, with the Bermuda Triangle, they think the same kind of anomaly is happening there. And that's why when people go into this area, there's, like, some weird, like, polar issue going on where it could open up some portal or some shit and that's why people are disappearing when they fly in there and they see weird shit i think there was something about some dude that flew a plane through there he said he saw fucking dinosaurs or some shit like, oh yeah yeah your sesame street that ain't fucking happening like and then yeah. like of course he what are you gonna see that shit to the public like i nope. saw i saw dinosaurs dude not if you want another job <laughs> like no i definitely saw barney not and he if was, you want another job he was not happy so like you know it's strange because there are those like regions on the earth that have this weird thing happening. And I think that's that might be one spot just happening in, in that part of you know the world, but it's even worse because it's not only just like a, a wormhole, but it's like paranormal and UFOs are there. So maybe it's like some kind of weird perfect trifecta of things happening. But that that definitely was the creepiest spot because the wormhole thing was strange because somebody said they could see a different sky. And buildings. So, yeah. And Remember that picture? Yeah, the the um, twin tire looking one. Yeah. So it's it's like phasing in and out of different realities. It seems like or different dimensions. And then when that dude came through or whatever it was came through, like and like climbed through and like took off. Well, the way that they like, made it sound like too was that it wasn't. It didn't appear like a doorway. Yeah, it was like it a appeared little like small... a circle above the ground. Mm -hmm. So there was space between the ground. And where the circle, the the portal began, where there was there was just space, air, our space, like Donnie Darko's shit. How it had, yes, how it kind of showed that. Well, just because he had to crawl, he at the point I'm getting at is he had to crawl out instead of step through. Like mm -hmm. okay, like so it's kind of weird. Is it? Are they? Are are these fucking weird creatures? Opportunistic, and they're just waiting around in the same area where they know Ooh, they that poor hole, that dude. Exactly, like, oh, here it is, and they're like, crawl through real quick. Sunday night, poor hole, Sunday. Because I mean, for real, if you could make, if if they're making it, why is it so inconvenient? You know what I mean? Or maybe it's 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 a mixture where they are kind of making it, the portal, but also they have to wait for the right circumstances, and it's just kind of okay. Well, it's, it'll be big enough for me to get through, so let's try to jump through this bitch. That's that's it, that's the one thing I'm pointing to at because it all kind of seems it does seem higher tech. But it seems a lot less human. I and 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 sure that sure that makes sense. But 
even more monster yeah, than, it seems than like alien it, or higher being. It seems very, yeah, demonically evil. Like, it's strange because instead of UFOs, doesn't it feel like there's some kind of weird evil happening? Kind of, but... With there this, is, but it's a different element. Like, this one feels yeah. like some sci-fi horror shit. Where some, some real evil. It's like, they're talking about the Skinwalker itself and how it was on its, like, hind legs or some shit, and it was all, like, a black creature with no neck. Yeah, well... well we don't know what creature, if it was the skinwalker or what the fuck, but they said the creature came out and it was huge and it had no neck but a big ass head and a big ass body. So the way I kind of think of it is like um, the Bagger Vance, like Juggernaut, you know, oh. with the helmet because you never <laughs> <laughs> Rock Lesnar, you know, yeah. no neck. <laughs> Legend of Bagger Vance, this whole thing. But you know, it's just weird because it kind of it doesn't seem so fleshed out. Like for instance, our technology now, like this computer, I can fucking I could turn it off, control it, decide where I'm gonna put it, and everything. Just the way that it was a little hole he had to climb through, it made it seem like it wasn't as controlled as it should be. Not so that's kind of circumstantial. Weird. Like it was a, I don't know. Um, that's weird, man. Because like, like what would what would it take to create some kind of wormhole? Right, and like, and how often that would happen, and who's controlling that? Uh, then, like, why there? It's such a rando ass spot. Like, yeah, it's in the middle of nowhere, and it's so creepy. And and what was also really creepy is that they were talking about how whatever it was, whatever phenomenon was happening, it seemed like it was one step ahead of you. Like it knew how to, you know, be one one way to make you think one thing, and you're like, oh, it might happen here, and all of a sudden, boop, nope, just kidding. Or would draw it always drop shit off randomly where you're not looking or anything, like and, and just random shit. Like the one thing where they had the scoops coming out of the ground of they're taking like giant clumps of earth out. Like why? And there was no dirt. Yeah, anywhere. it was just like gone. Like that's so fucking weird. It's like somebody opened a portal and was like scoop and then scoop some shit out. I'm like huh, see what they think about that one. It's like yeah. somebody's fucking with us. You know, could be. I don't know. I mean, it's very strange. What did you think was the weirdest? story there because there's a lot it's there's like paranormal there's like ufo there, it, it's so it's so much so i don't i man that since you meant because the wormhole i think obviously has it but to mention something else i would have to say that where they got the bulls the four bulls that weigh like two thousand pounds a piece how they got them like perfectly lined up in this little container that was off the ground Out a little of the bit. Out into that container, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, how the fuck do you do that? And then the field was magnetized. So the way that they made that seem... So I think that was the craziest one. Because to be able to control that, like, I don't care how you did it. You, you like, put them in some kind of fucking paralysis, some stasis, where they just can't... Where they're completely docile. Yeah. And you know what I mean? It, it's like zero gravity shit where you're just like, beep, and you pick them up. You know, I don't <laughs> Isn't know. Isn't this fun? <laughs> but it's crazy. And they said afterwards they checked around the area and it was all... It was all um, magnetized. Did they say that, that there was footprints from the cows into there? No. I don't I don't remember whether they said it or not, but I just remember they said that it was magnetized. And, yeah. it didn't, and I'm pretty sure they didn't because they said how the... You know, they, they didn't have any sign, I'm pretty that sure. That makes me wonder, is because, you know, the a mag, a, what's it called? You magnify a pole or whatever, and how it, like, creates this weird force field around it, and you reverse the polar opposite of it, if it could, like, suck in on itself, and that would create some kind of fucking portal. I like don't know. The, like the exact middle part of the two different forces, like, it would put him in some kind of... I don't know, I, I, I have no fucking idea, but I know that that was definitely creepy, and anything that can control something as heavy as a fucking car, not only as heavy, but as I mean, it's live. It's yeah, it's, a, it's, and it's alive. a mean motherfucker. When then they came to, they tore the shit out of that place. Yeah, and then it took them like four hours just to get all four of them back into the crowd. Like, dude, that's nuts. And the, what tripped me out about all that is how it was magnetized. Like, that's really strange. Like, whatever machines are using, like the Bob Lazar, you know, UFO conspiracy thing is all talking about how they were trying to reverse engineer a spaceship in S4 and how there's an anti-gravity machine inside of it so nobody gets the inertia and gets smacked back and forth when they're taking these hard turns and whatnot. It's like a fucking gimbal. Yeah, you know? but it, like, it's also got to do with some kind of magnetism too. Maybe it's, it's drawing off some kind of magnetic wave that's offsetting itself. But like whatever it is, if, that mach if it was some kind of spaceship or portal or whatever... 
how it does with magnetism, I think is the real key there. Because uh, what's the other thing that um, scientists are talking about? The black matter or dark matter? Dark matter, anti-gravity. Anti-gravity, like how dense it is. So if you think of a black hole, how dense it could be, it could put a puncture in the actual time space itself, how heavy it is. So um, maybe the like the magnetism, you know, how it's got the, the density or whatever and dark matter just intensifies everything. They found a way to pinpoint the magnetism of it to create wormholes. But then, I don't know. Like, they're all talking about that kind of weird shit in particle E115 is another dense matter, uh, something they need to, like, fuel, um, you know, certain... Uh, you. Yeah, okay. certain certain like spaceships and whatnot, and so like they think the, the fuel that's that's uh, that's fueling these crafts is the element E one fifteen, and the Bob Lazar shit. Yeah, uh. so I'm wondering if that has to do, like all that shit's got to have to do with something with this ranch because, or at least what area it is because what's strange is like it's all within a certain mile radius it seems like and then there was cases where whatever was there was following them yeah so when the person would move they would still get some shit following that them. seems more demonic that's the side i'm thinking is the more demonic side because that's some that's an angel devil demon shit where you need a fucking exorcism afterwards to get the whatever it is away from you so i don't know that's that whole that whole fucking thing is such a weird it's such a weird topic and nobody can get their mind around it because it's not only using you dealing with UFOs and paranormal. It's just like, it's everything. Like they have this weird creature and then they're talking about dire wolves and shit, like big ass wolves that haven't seen for 10,000 years or some crap. And it's like maybe a time space portal opened up and that came through. But then of course there's no evidence of a time space portal, even though I created one totally in my basement. Well, I mean, it's like the, the, the dire wolf thing, and, and that wolf that dragged the calf out of the out of the corral, it didn't seem like a regular animal. You know, it wasn't ferocious. It it wasn't reacting to pain. It seemed almost like it was some kind of biological, mechanical shit. And it was weird because the way that he said when they went back and they saw the flesh, only though it's only been however long it took for them to find to to figure out that they they lost the wolf they couldn't find the tracks and then get back to the house they saw the the flesh that they blew off after they shot him with the thirty odd six they uh, uh says <laughs> they uh what do you call it they said that the flesh looked like it had decayed yeah, past it what like, it should have it was old yeah yeah so I I mean who knows what kind of crazy shit is going on I mean it's so there's so many different things because we ob- we obviously don't know so it's like is it interdimensional where there's just like a fucking like parallel universes, like all throughout, where it's almost like they're like right next to us, but I mean, they're intangible, can't see us, insane. And at these points of you know, magnet, like where the 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 Earth's magnetic field or or whatever the fuck is all crazy and haywire, then maybe this is where they collide a little bit, and they could kind of get out here and there, and maybe they know how to use it, and we don't. Dimensional or, breach, you know, something like that, or or maybe they're time travelers, or maybe they're from this universe, or you know, another galaxy, not a parallel universe, but just like another galaxy. They're fuckers, is what it is. They're tricksters. <sighs> they're assholes. They keep fucking with us. They do. Somebody just let does. us know, man. It's not that hard. Just say, hey, man, this is what's up. I'll be right back. Keep talking. But yeah. Or don't talk. <laughs> Bam! Don't you dare! Don't you ever dare! This week on MSNBC. We like to go over Donald Trump and how he's the best person that's ever lived on the planet Earth. No? Hello? Who's this? I do have the right plan for 2021. It's amazing. It's going to be so sick. I can't wait to show everybody either. Oh, look at that. She hung up on me. Couldn't deal with my bullshit, but she's got to call me waste my fucking time. Goddamn. People and their scams and their bullshit. Sunday night with smooth jazz with jazz. Bring it to you all weekend long. Join us Monday 
and Tuesday and Sunday. Sorry, yo. <laughs> You're gonna hate me, dude. <laughs> some some fucking insurance lady called me, right? <laughs> That's who was calling me, and so I called her back. And like when I was on, I was like, "Who's this?" And so I put on speaker. It's like, this is blah, blah, blah with some certain space. Do you have a plan for 2021? I was like, fuck yeah, dude. It's going to be dope. And she hung up on me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. My bad, yo. The kid. My kid needs help. The kid also kid, huh? Yeah, no? bro. Um, just think of all the shit that George Knapp's seen. Right? To like, to like I, I would love to get him down on a bed. Put him through <laughs> hypnosis. <laughs> he thought I was going somewhere make, else. Make him speak. <laughs> Put him through hypnosis and see. Because he. What he, did you see? He is such a professional. Mm-hmm. There is still shit he won't say. Mm-hmm. He doesn't give up names of anybody. Like this dude is a stone cold professional, and I admire the fuck out of that because so many people I've dealt with are not fucking professional. It was George. It was George. It was him. George, you motherfucker. Yeah, dude. And and what's crazy is that he dealt with the Lazar stuff too. Like he's around everywhere, and when when you started talking about the topic of the Skinwalker Ranch, it like you can tell there was like something in him was like, "Fuck, I don't want to go to this one again." It's a weird. I mean, it's such a weird story. Um, I just, I, th- I don't know the whole thing in general. Would you go out there? Would you stay the night out there in the woods? It depends on how how I went out. If it was just me, hell no. But Dude, if I went out I would... with like the the whole squad, you know. The battalion. I roll with you. Let like me do nid, it. Like nids. <laughs> CIA. Where's my nids at? Where's my nids at? <laughs> the front, the back. I dude, stick fill in there. Dude, I'd rather just go out campfire style like they did. We just. Well, yeah. Yeah. But then apparently you can't bring cameras because they suck all the battery out. Of course. Well, I don't. Did he? he I don't. Yeah, they said they had. So many things happened, but a lot of the things that ended up happening would, they put the cameras on systems. Where they they were powered, there wasn't batteries. Mm. You know, it was plugged into an actual system, so it was outlets. You, exactly. So it was just continuous. What would happen was the anomalies would move out of range of the cameras. Oh, you're gonna fucking do this here? Fine, we'll do it over there. Or and they then, would fuck up the cameras. Yeah. And so every every time be like showing proof, and they'd be like, we can't because they keep fucking up the cameras. And they're like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh sure, bro. Sure. <laughs> huh. yeah. I don't think so. You know, and that that's the crazy. So obviously, like you said, the trickster thing. It's sentient. It's 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 it that's what's knows fucking more than creepy because it's like a paranormal sentient thing. Little just, brother that keeps knows. fucking pranking us. Yeah, <laughs> but that that the the um the calf shit, the actual mutilation, bro. That's scary shit because you it looked like they took the fucking calf somewhere, put it in some like weird chamber, right? Like it would just like held all its parts and it and just like pulled all of it off. It literally looked like it got stripped of all of itself. Like, yeah, yeah. All of you stripped, gone. But what's crazy? There's no blood, no At blood, the scene. no none. And what's what reminds me of that kind of like precision and and how clean everything was, besides like a laser cut because I could light shit on fire or whatever, leave a burn mark. It was my daughter had her tonsils taken out. They had some kind of uh, tool they were using that vibrated the flesh so fast it just like melted off. And she came home that day and was talking and everything was fine. I was like, what the fuck? Like, I thought for sure she was going to have to, like, have ice cream and all that shit you had when you were kids and whatnot. But vibrated her fucking skin off. And I was like, that freaked me out. Once I figured that shit out, I was like, wait, what? So there totally could be something like that. If they're, if whatever it is, is screwing with, you know, these calves and whatnot... They could definitely have this technology where it just vibrates all of what they are, and then just they're just gone because it lo- it literally looked like a colored red on their you know on their fucking skin or whatever. Like what the fuck? That doesn't look like meat. It, it looked fake sometimes, mm-hmm. but then it's just like no, it's just there's no blood on it, and there's no blood anywhere. And then they did this test where they took blood and poured it in the dirt to see if it would soak in the dirt, and it was there for two days and didn't soak in. So like. It's just a giant, like, what the fuck? The whole thing is just so fucking strange. Even if, like, let's say, figuratively, there, somebody opened the portal and went, yink, and just pulled that thing out, there's going to be some blood somewhere when they put it back because it looked like somebody took this thing and placed it as, you know, the way it was sitting when it was dead, 
after they skin it and everything. Like spread eagle. Yeah, and just like splayed it out. Splayed it. And it just, if something were to grab it and then pull it into some other different dimension, yank its yurts out, and then fucking splay it back in, it's, it's still going to have some kind of blood trail. Or even on its ear or something, right? And the, they were tagging those cows that day, and the, the calf had a tag on its ear, and it cut the fucking tag off. Just a one more, like, ah, ah, fuck you. Just a giant trickster shit. And I just, it's so strange. What are those, like, what are those, like, fairy things called from medieval times that would fuck with you? If, uh, now nah, I'm a crazy. Bruh. Oh, man. Bruh. I forget what they're called, but it's, like, some weird, oh, it's in The Witcher. Remember that thing that's, like, bad luck? It's, like, a little thing that would follow you. No. I don't know. Somebody, Sorry, bruh. Somebody help me. But there's, like, oh, a, no, a weird, bruh. like, nymphy kind of thing that like would create bad luck around you and would always follow you if you open it out of this like genie bottle or some shit mm. and it seems like that's what's going on there because you get people to get things latched on them and they you know they go home and, and it's still there or they leave and they move and it's still there somewhere mm-hmm. yeah yeah I don't know man I, the way that they talked about it was the the slices they said it looked like it was sliced by some kind of mechanical machine that was meant for precision cutting because it they said it looked like a scalpel when the ear was cut off the the flesh around it it looked like a scalpel there was no jagged like if an animal attacks it there's going to be teeth marks it's going to be fucking it's going to be fucked up fucked up all right now you fucked it'll be up. fucked up i don't know where that came from okay <laughs> fat tony <laughs> the irish <laughs> don't fuck don't fuck with me uh, but you know, it, and then they said that the, another part of the animal it looked like it had been chopped by a machete. So all the all, it's crazy, and the, the fact that they said a machine, it just keeps it keeps bringing me back to that is so scary because there's crazy ass animal, this wolf, dire wolf, that is nice to people. Hey, what's up, man? Pet me. Go ahead. Okay, I'm, gonna, then, I'm gonna go get this cat. Yeah, I'm gonna bite the shit you out know, and try to pull him through in the most traumatic fashion because it was through it was like through these fucking. <laughs> Little, you know, the gate. He's gonna put his head up and over. I mean, it's not like this wolf isn't already eight feet tall. It could just be like, yank, the, and then fuck. take it out. You know, they said it was dire wolf size. That was like how many times bigger than a wolf? Like three times bigger yeah. than a regular and wolf? And they still try to take him through the funnel. And I don't know if you motherfuckers know this, but regular wolves are big as fuck. Yeah, they're fucking big. My, my mom's ex-boyfriend had a wolf. It was a 100% fucking wolf. He, like, found it as a cub, something, you know. And it this... So the boyfriend was like 6'4", six, 6'3". Six, the wolf standing up on his hinders was a little taller than him. No shit. No fucking shit, dog. I've never seen one that fucking big. I'm That's telling you, crazy. it's huge. It was beautiful. His name was Maya Tuck, bro. It was beautiful. It was fucking beautiful. I missed that fucking dog. And our wolf. And it was cool. It was with. Uh, it was funny because they had a German Shepherd, a little a female German Shepherd. Maya Tuck was a boy. And the female German Shepherd ran shit. Like, she was the one who ran shit. But then, uh, eventually, they had to let him go because he was just a fuck. I mean, dude, it's he was a like, fuck a wolf. man, I want a wolf. <laughs> what the fuck? He's like, I'm out here being dog. I want a wolf shit. Like, wait, what? You're not a wolf either? Uh, but I, so I'm saying, three times bigger than that, even if it was more, if it was five, holy shit. Dude, he's trying shit. to bite a fucking calf through. Yeah, I mean, if you think about the calf. It. Like, if, if you're going to eat something and you're a wolf, what do you go for? The baby week. Or it's something, right? And that's something that's not quite that big a fucking size. Yeah. Not something that even a calf is still 500 fucking pounds. Well, it's just crazy. It was like it was programmed. <laughs> it was like, okay, you know, don't kill these, don't hurt these guys. Leave the farmers alone. But then it saw this calf and it was like, okay, I'm going to take it. And, it. and took it out of there and just was dragging. It was getting shot. You know, they beat him with sticks. They shot him with 357 Magnum. Then they Magnum. got out of the 36. And then he finally got hit, dropped the calf, and then left. But so it's it's crazy. It, it just scares the shit out of me because it's not just aliens and and crafts and shit like that, which is scary by itself. Considering that they say that this lady got hit with a light, or this dude got hit with a light, and it like burned his face, and he ended up dying from cancer. Mm-hmm. It was like cancer. Yeah, really. So that is so. I mean, which why would strange. you spread a cancerous light on somebody? Yeah. If you're already in this high tech shit, you know that this thing you have is cancerous. It's strange because they have the the um what's it called? They have the adduction, you know, the light comes down and picks them up and whatever. 
uh, is that ever been cancerous? Is this like the first we've heard that when the light came on him, it was like some kind of harmful shit? I don't. I've seen a lot of documentaries about this kind of shit, or just YouTube videos about it. So who knows how true it is? But I've heard of stuff like this before, where they got the light shined on him, and they ended up getting like a cancer or a burn or something like oh, that. No, I've heard that before. Oh, yeah. I, I haven't heard that. That's fucking fucked up. Oh. Never mind. I don't want to be abducted. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. Hell Fuck no. That shit. I'm trying Fuck to be that. I'm trying to be the best me, <laughs> not the dead me. Oh, man, that's so fucked. Dude, and it's what's weird is there's that other story they were talking about how um, when the, the one one of the uh, families that bought the ranch, they saw these things peering into their windows, like tall, black-figured things, and then eventually started going into the house. What? <laughs> Dude, if I saw fucking anything peering through my window... Through the yacht, <laughs> all through all day, fucking shotgun, something, dude. I, if you're living in the middle of fucking nowhere, you gotta have them heavies, and you have some eight foot creature thing, fucking, like a bigfoot, yeah, like a fucking bigfoot. Oh, what's for dinner? Peering at you through the fucking window, like I'm so out of there, dude. Fuck that. And then they're like, no, it's day. It's just George. He's just a neighbor. He's coming over for sugar, just eight miles down the road, plus another twenty miles and another fifteen on top of that. Dude, there's nothing out there. And then they just happen to like, hey, let's see what's in this shack. Why? I just don't understand why that's also such a pin, hot, pinpointed spot, you know? Such a hot spot. Well, what's crazy is, well, it's all fucking crazy. But you remember George Knapp, he was talking about how he, he all these places we've never heard of before. Bass, the Bigelow Advanced Aerospace scientific whatever the fuck stupid ass and, names and then the nids the the national <laughs> the institute of nids. discovery science and and he said that these places were funded by other other programs that have not been named mm -hmm. so what the fuck is going on there is like we barely find out about this nids shit and how they're doing all this extra research and they're funded by they're funded by big low and i think partially the government the government ended up putting some money into it or maybe the government is the one doing it now either way the government did know what was going on like they i mean they did <clears throat> but they're just the nids was doing far. it but now they're in there yeah, i mean i'd isn't imagine it the, that most ex are the most invested into like conspiracy or phenomenon theory thing there is with anything considering the government like the that government we, actually put a of shit, ufos yeah of any phenomenon i guess yeah of that kind of shit yeah because it's so fucking bonkers it's crazy bro. i mean there are some weird shit out there like the what was the manhattan um project where the boat disappeared somehow through some time portal and then came back and everybody was infused into the fucking boat well, supposedly they they tried they were actively trying to create this portal. Oh, that's right. Yeah, remember that? Yeah. Like they had made a machine. We have done it, and then they're like, oh, "What? Time to go through." That and then, made a fog or some shit. I don't know. The fog was the was the time machine or yeah, or was the, the was yeah, and then they ended up going through and then coming back days later, I think, or or maybe I think it was instantaneous. Almost like they went through, they lost them for a minute, and then they came back through, and they saw them, and people were fused with the boat and everything. Anyway, we'll we'll look into that. Maybe they have a documentary on that because that is right up the alley of this new series. That yeah, we're doing. and it's strange. Is like that same type paranormal shit is happening on this this fucking ranch, and it's just like what the fuck. Well, if you think of the Bermuda Triangle too, there was people. There was like this this map of perfectly like spaced apart triangular areas where the magnetic pole was like, I think super strong or super mm -hmm. weak or something like yeah. that. And the Bermuda triangle was on one of them. And then the, the, what was it? The devil's, the sub sea or something. There's like another thing like that. There's a bunch of sh shit like that. Um, and I think they are like spaced apart in like, like on a, in like a diagram, like mathematically, like equally apart in a pattern or some shit. So, that's think, something to look into. Do you there. think maybe the like the pyramids and the Mayan pyramids, how like they're all charted out exactly as like a you know a special distance from each other that like equates the distance to the moon and all that kind of crap? Do well, you think the Bermuda Triangle and just the way that the latitude, and longitude, and all the measurements equal out, like how they measure to the moon with the pyramids, somehow collate with the the pyramids themselves? Like maybe at the top of the pyramid of like the Mayan pyramid or some shit. That's where one of the portals could be entered. 
or some dumb shit like that. I have no that all, idea. all that shit could be linked somehow. Who kn- And who knows what they were actually doing? Because I think they said, it was, weren't the, the pyramids used as, like, generators? Mm-hmm. For was power? That, yeah, because all the gold and shit. I, I think, yeah, something like that. They could have been used for... Because the, supposedly the, the river ran through it underneath it, and it, that gave it the power it needed, and then it did its shit. And, mm-hmm. But then something upstream changed the flow of the river, and then it pretty much made them... Some, that, I think that's what I heard. But anyway, this is where, that's other shit. That could generate the power they need instead of have element 115. That could have been a substitute because they couldn't create an element. I have no fucking idea. I do. I no. created it. He's never time traveled. Not once. <laughs> not once. I know this shit. I don't know, man. It's, I, think it's, I think Jeremy Corbell is just Scott. a middleman with money. Fucking Scott. No, but I, I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of talking shit about him. But he just rubs me the wrong way. I'm Naturally. sorry. It's true. I speak the real, at least what's real to me, and he just rubs me the wrong way. He just seems like an opportunistic guy. He's thumbing who me got right in now? There, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be gummed up. I'm going to be thumbed up, bro. <laughs> Man, I... I know. I, I feel bad because I... I actually don't feel bad. Fuck that. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Fuck that shit because... Fuck him. He's doing what we all want to do. We all want to be a part of this shit. If, yeah. I, if I had money, Maybe I'd come up and find is. George Knapp, too, and be like, let's so you go. you know what? Cheers to him. Yeah. Except for, please stop. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, at least I would be out in the fucking in Skinwalker Ranch, too. Maybe they're like, this George Knapp motherfucker's got too much heat on him. All the paranormal guys are one step ahead. They're like, yeah. He's all the def- paranormal. He's definitely going to know. All the paranormal He's going to explain this shit. Let's uh, let's go this way, and they fucking screw with a bunch of cows or whatever. Just the fact that they it seems like they're always one step ahead. That's like they so know scary. what you're gonna do. Yeah. They know so what is it right now? Time travelers, like extra dimensional people that kind of just look down, or or they know our. Ha- I, that's why time travel seems so weird, because I didn't think it not only not really possible, but I mean, it doesn't exist. Like you know. It, you can't do it. You can't do it. But then the extra dimensional portal shit and all that kind of stuff. It's like, I have no idea what the world is like. I don't. I have no fucking idea. All this shit going on from... Because I think first it started out with Bob Lazar. That's how I first heard about all this shit. And I was like, what the fuck? Like these crabs. the fuck out of him too. But even Forever. then, if you think about it, he didn't have... He didn't have the kind of experiences that they're having over there. It's are they connected or are they completely different? And there's so much shit we just don't know about that is but the crazy thing is it's not running rampant. It seems like it's kind of to one area. The yeah. shit that is scary is like that Lieutenant Fravor shit with those little tic tac things that are just doing whatever they that? want. But those are not malicious. And no. that's what's fucking crazy to yeah. me. It's, and where was that at? um that was overseas, but like what was the area? Do you know? I th- I think they said it was down in California, like along there. I I could be completely wrong. I think I remember him saying San Diego, or maybe they left from there. Or some shit. I don't fucking know. Honestly, I don't know. But it it was crazy. It was crazy. The jump that the thing ended up making. I uh, I don't know. And we'll look at all this shit. Maybe I want I want I wonder if there's a documentary about these specific things we're talking about because the most of the the knowledge I have on them are from YouTube videos, mm-hmm. which you know they're not. Well, there's me. there was one that happened. Uh, it was 2017, and I worked uh, over at the Wall to Wall still, and I was still working in the in the yard. There was a, a bunch of uh, fighter jets scrambled and just took off. Right, I'm standing outside. I was like, well, that's strange. Like a bunch of F-16s just woof. And a buddy of mine, Joe, he knows a lot about airplanes and, and military and, and all that kind of stuff. He came and he's like, dude, that's that's not normal. He's like, those F-16s that just took off, he's like, they're after something. I was like, oh, no shit. I was like, I wonder what it is. And, like, the next day, I was watching this. Uh, I always watch this, like, uh, YouTube video. It was called, um, um, oh, shit, what was that called? Um, some paranormal one. Uh, but anyways, the, the guy always covered... And every extraterrestrial stuff that happened all, all over the place, right? And then what happened is that he covered what happened. It was a, a UFO sighting happened. And it was in, uh, it happened right over in Oregon where the airport was. They saw a UFO going over an airport really slow. So they scrambled these jets and they were chasing it down California. Like, I think it was like 15 to 30 minutes they were chasing this fucking thing. And they made it all the way down to California in like 15 minutes or 30 minutes, wherever it was. That's insane, first of all. But they said there was, there was 
uh, three to six, maybe uh, somewhere in that range, they were chasing this thing, and it was just fucking playing with them. Like, they're hauling ass, and it's, like, jumping around. Like, do 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 And then just decides to just take off. Like, and that happened here. Like, I was I was standing there watching the jets when they were taking off. Man. So I knew that, that actually fucking happened. Mm-hmm. So it was very, very strange. Oh, Secure Team. That was the YouTube channel, Secure Team, which I don't even know if they're fucking around anymore. The dude did so much... So much shit, and people so thought... So much finding out, they thought they yeah, got whacked. Dude, like, his channel, like, got fucked with for a while, and I don't know if it's still up or whatnot, but I've seen a lot of weird shit from that, and that's so another thing from that... But, but... Is he clout chasing? No, I don't think so. You I, sure? I don't think so. Because, I mean, all it took was a motherfucker to park a... Because I remember the thing that had me kind of... Because I, I watched them for a while. Uh, Cause I went through that phase too. Where I was going, th- I was watching them. <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god!" But I remember I was watching every update and shit. I was like, "Whoa!" But I remember this one time he was talking about these cars that were outside his house. Yeah, I and, remember that. And that and kind of stuff. Yeah. And I was kind of thinking, bro, I could park a car outside my house and be like, "Dude, there's this car outside." Yeah, there. I know that. That to me, at the end of that seemed like to be at the end of his thing too, of his run, because I. I think he just got paranoid because he might have been getting some <laughs> some deep shit. So the one one of the videos that came out that tripped me the fuck out still to this day, and I think was one of the last videos, or it was probably one of the last videos that he had, he had uploaded or whatever, uh-huh. was uh, the sun. Somebody was like videotaping the sun, like NASA or whatnot, and there's this little black oh, circle yeah. thing that came up, looked like it was stealing energy from it, and there was another one below it too. But they said that that little black thing that looked like a little vortex or like a little leech hand or like a, a fucking like a tail or something was like going into the sun like it once it like pulled away like boof and like took off and they said that little black thing was like the size of like four of our fucking planets it was it was that big compared to the whole sun i was like wait what like once i had thought about it that way and the fact that something could get that close to the sun and be able to take energy from it that is smart as fuck, first of all. If you can steal energy from something that is just a nothing but a ball of energy, that's smart as shit. But being able to get there with a giant four times the size of our planet fucking machine and be able to steal energy from like that and this bounce, like, dude, like, what else is there? Like, if that, that looked like that pretty much sums up for me that we're fucked. Yeah. And I have no idea how. Anybody could ever try to defend against shit like that. And maybe maybe the government knew this a long time ago and they're like, whatever, like we're useless. There's nothing we can do. Well, I think in, and in we that, might as well control what we got here. That's the one though. Our own thing. I'm telling you, that's the one because the scariest story out of all of this shit that I've ever heard out of any UFOs, and like all of this is scary. But I mean, all of it in its own way, because it shows that not only do we not have control over anything, but there are things that have control over us, practically. At yeah. least could. They could. Um, the thing that scared me the most was the one time that the UFO, well, the one time that I heard of, who knows how many times it happened, there was a UFO that flew over a missile silo that was a secret government. Didn't it shut it down? It, it acted. It, it activated it. Oh. It turned it on, and then it shut it down at the last minute just to kind of like, yo, we got this. Like, you know what I mean? Boom. Like, we, we could flex Strong nuts. Arm. That's so fucked. That's the left and the right nut on there, and then they just slap the dick like right on top of them and they weren't i mean what do you do what they shut down your shit your biggest most powerful weapon because that's what scared me i felt like for the longest time the thing that we had was the the jihad shit the 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 bomb in your vest like fucking go ahead take our planet bitch we're gonna blow it up you know if you're gonna kill us enslave us or whatever aliens or whatever we're gonna blow this bitch up but the fact that a ufo knew where the secret government thing was and flew right to it and flew over it and started scrambling exactly where it was like it's like oh i know exactly where nukes are i can see with this little you know fucking whatever funnel vision it's got to see nuclear activity and then go shut it, shut it down, turn it off, do whatever it wants, two circles around it. Whatever. Dude, if, if I if I could, if I was in that situation, I would try to blow an EMP and see if that would work. To blow it down? Yeah. It's like, ah, 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 ah. They probably, you know, the anti-gravity shit that's in there probably deflects everything. I don't, probably because it's gravity. Yeah. Like, they said if you could control gravity, it's pretty much game over. You can do yeah. anything you want. Could you imagine controlling gravity because you distort time and reality itself and light warping and all that kind of weird shit. Which is the only way we know how to make gravity, according to Bob Lazar, who I trust. He says it's uh, mass. is by having something with enough mass that it just... 
creates its own gravity because it has enough mass. You know, like our planet. And it's so fucking massive that it just has its own gravity. Like, that's how it happens. From my understanding, from what he explained it as. All, uh, there are so many scary things. It's just like, man, we, we aren't shit. Apparently, we're nothing. Hold on. You know, so yeah, that's... I am the shit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, man. Oh, that it, it's crazy stuff. We're gonna look into some more stuff. I think this is gonna be the longest series that I want to do because I really like this topic. I like thinking about uh, paranormal, extraterrestrial, demons, and all that shit. And I want to touch on all this shit, all the kind of spooky stuff that nobody really um, wants to talk about. Well, no, not that because everybody wants to talk about it. At least I feel like everybody I know likes talking about that kind of shit. Bro, except for to, my wife. Go to Fred Meyer and be like, "Hey, you want to talk about aliens?" <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, "All I said was paper or plastic." Is that is that everybody? Nobody knows about it. Nobody. Everybody has no knowledge on it. You pretty much, you know, we could all only speculate on it. So I think that's really cool to do. Yeah. It's just to have a conversation like this where we talk about all the random stuff. And what we think it is. So I'm going to look into each kind of topic. I'm going to look at demons and that kind of stuff. And then um, extraterrestrial specifically uh, and UFO because this one was kind of a mixed bag. Uh, we Dude, don't really know what a, it is. It's such a wide coverage, though, of the whole thing. The whole the whatever whole Skinwalker pie. Ranch is is just a big pile of fuck. And you're getting Toys R Us with all this shit. Like... <laughs> Toys R Us a fucking phenomena. <laughs> what the fuck? Phenomena. What the fuck you even talk <laughs> like about? That, dude. But yeah, I, so I, this one I'm gonna, I might I might even go as far as five episodes for this series. I mean, who knows? I'm gonna look into it. I know there's another one I want to do. It's called Missing the Missing 411, and it's about the 411 known cases of the people who have gone missing in state parks, and how it's usually like it's crazy, like the. A parent will look away, look back, and their kid will be gone. Just like that and crazy shit like that. And it's usually in state parks. Just crazy stuff. So there's that I want to watch for sure. And um, I think I want to do something on Bob Lazar or just some extraterrestrial, something like that. I want to switch it up. So we're going to be doing more of that stuff. Pay attention. Check it out. And, uh, yeah, man, I had a good time. I appreciate you coming on the, the mm. V-Cast again. So that worked? Stop sucking dicks. V-Cast. <laughs> that looks like an X with my hands, though. V, V, V. Okay, and hopefully we'll have this audio right. I'm looking at this, and I've realized with this motherfucker, I'm going to have to put the mic right in front of him because he talks like this. Like Mike. you're talking to, gotta talking give, to the wall. Got to give uh, you talking to the wall. You know, got to give explanation there. He just Which loves really you happened. seeing his face. He loves you seeing his face. All right, but yeah, uh, so we'll be back next week with another episode of the VCast. It's going to be about, we don't know yet, but we're going to find out, and we were going to post about it on our social medias. Buffalo Pleasure. Is his handle on IG? Oral no. fixation. <laughs> what, are you on IG still? You better get on IG, fam. This is where everybody's at. I don't know. I know you're, I can still tag your account. It's like uh, Searles or, or, or something like that. You better figure that out. But he is Shredder Vision on YouTube, and his band is called Hangfire. You can find it on all major platforms. His new album, Kamikaze, is out, and it's spelled wrong on purpose. Yeah. How many times we're going to have to... I'm going to have to say that every time. I just I just want him to know. Like, did you know that it was... Yes! Yeah. I know. <laughs> yes, I, I, I could know. Google, bitch. Yeah. And you can find me on uh, IG, Facebook... You want to send me money, Cash App, Venmo. Cash Money, Vev. All that. And Cash my website, Vev. VallejoPNW.com. Uh, just go ahead and if you want, just Google me, Vallejo PNW, and all my stuff will pop up and you can pick and choose. I'm a rapper, videographer, uh, photographer, audiographer, if that's a word. <laughs> <laughs> heroin specialist <laughs> I, I do everything uh, we mix and master we got beats on my website anything you need hit me up uh, we're doing it all I'm dropping some music videos here pretty soon making uh, bacon making mad bacon and if you want to see some of my work most of the my new video actually all of my new music videos that I've done for local artists they're not up yet um for the public view but if you want to see them even if you just want to see them as a fan hit me up and I'll send you the link so you can watch them we appreciate y'all mm -hmm. stay up mm. oh mm. word up I think we did it word to my and this worked my